So if you plan on training jiu-jitsu for a long time, one of the most important things is your training habit. A single technique can only do so much, but if you're gonna train over 10 years and you have bad training habits, it's going to drastically affect where your game ends up 10 years down the line. So I decided to make a short list of some of the most common mistakes people make when they're developing their jiu-jitsu game that really hinders their growth over time. So the first one in no particular order is focusing too much on their performance in normal sparring rounds rather than fixating on positions. You have to understand that jujitsu is extremely complicated. You can be really good at finishing a triangle choke, but terrible at escaping mount. And these are all different skill sets that require to be developed in isolation. So a lot of people, they go in and they're trying to win every match, especially in the beginning. And it's great to be competitive, but realistically, you're a lot less efficient learning. A programmer friend of mine recently referred to this as context shifting. And he even said that they gave an example for him when he was in school of they gave someone a list to count from one, two, three, four, and go through the alphabet A, B, C, and go through Roman numerals I, I, I. And if you try to go down the list one at a time, you're much faster. If you try to go across like one, A, I, two, B, it becomes way harder to keep everything ordered in your head. And in some sense, developing a jiu-jitsu is very similar to this because when you're working on your side control escape and then the guy switches to mount, now your brain has to shift. Oh, now I'm in bottom of mount. What am I supposed to do there? Now you're in an arm bar and then you're playing catch up. But when you do a lot of training focused on starting in a specific spot, like starting in the bottom of side control or starting with a triangle choke on, it allows you to stay on one topic until you develop competency in that position and then you can move on to a different problem. Eventually, when you get good at enough positions, you start to realize all a normal match is, is a collection of all these small mini positions put together. So if you're good at general guard retention, you're good at holding closed guard, you're good at finishing a triangle choke, you're gonna do pretty good in a match because when all these positions occur, you already know what to do. So another major one is not asking enough questions. Hands down, the students that I have seen get good the fastest in jiu-jitsu are the ones who are always willing to ask questions. You can learn techniques, you can listen to what your coach says, you can watch instructionals, but the problems that you're gonna have in positions are very unique. And there's a lot of different ways to mess up a technique. Believe me, from coaching a lot, I have seen so many different ways people mess up techniques. And the thing that you need to unlock is unique for you and your coach can't know that because they're not inside your head. So they may see you doing something weird and they can tell you not to do that. But when you ask like, oh, am I focused on pinning their hips or am I focused on pushing their leg down? That's a very different focus and they won't know what you're thinking about. So always ask questions. Of course, does that mean sometimes you're gonna ask a dumb question? Absolutely, there's a lot of dumb questions, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't ask them. A lot of times when a student asks a question like, what's the best sweep in jiu-jitsu? Or what's the best guard pass? Things like that, while they're not good questions in the sense that, well, it depends on the situation. There is no best sweep, it depends on the situation. It does give me an insight into how my student is seeing jujitsu and I can actually address a problem that's way bigger than the question they ask because now I can correct how they're seeing jujitsu and explain to them you're not looking to use a particular technique, you're fighting your opponent's body positions and then choosing an appropriate technique to solve that specific situation. Another one is not watching instructionals or not watching instructional content. Of course, you should always learn and listen to your coach, but the reality is all coaches are limited, including me. I only have so many positions that I know of. There's plenty of blue belts out there who have a specialty in a specific position that I've probably never worked that probably have more knowledge in that specific position than I do. So by only listening to your coach or one source of information, it makes it really hard to get better. You're not standing on the shoulders of giants and learning from people who've already gone through the process. Watching good instructional content from different people allows you to to really speed up the process without even stepping on the mat. You actually get better at jiu-jitsu, not necessarily from the hard sparring, 
the hard sparring is a necessary thing you do to instill the proper pattern recognition. But if you're putting your hand in the wrong spot in a certain situation, you can do that a thousand times on the mat and really grind your body down, but you may watch an instructional and they tell you that in the first 10 minutes of the video series, and now you just saved yourself thousands of hours on the mat. So really trying to maximize good instructional content from quality coaches is gonna help speed up your process. If you keep your training schedule the exact same as it is and commit yourself to watching like 10 to 20 minutes of video a week from quality sources, that's going to massively speed up the ability you improve at and also change at what you're focused on when you're rolling. Because you may see something in a competition video or in an instructional, and the next time you're in class and your instructor shows something or someone does something to you, your reticular activation system, what you're cued to look at will be more focused. Someone explained this to me before by saying, look around the room and look for everything that's red and try to keep that in your mind. Now close your eyes and think of everything that's green. You can't do it. You were so focused on everything that was red, you weren't trying to recall the things that were green. And a lot of times when you're sparring, that's the way it works. If you're not focused on certain things, you won't notice certain problems. So by expanding your horizon of the techniques and philosophies that other people have, it'll open your horizon of what you see in the matches that you're in. Another major one is being too rigid in your thinking or treating jujitsu rules like they're laws of physics. Even laws of physics change. And there's so many times that someone learns a technique and they think, oh, my elbow has to be here. Or, oh, I should never extend my arms. And they lock themselves into these rules and it actually inhibits their ability to grow. So learn techniques and try to use them, but try not to be too rigid in what you're learning because you're gonna learn from a lot of different people. And even the best people in the world will often contradict each other because they have different views on positions and evolving views on position. So try to play with different techniques and different ideas people give you, but also trust your physical instincts in the position. Of course, sometimes your instincts are really stupid. That's normal. If you ask a white belt, what, do you, what does your intuition tell you? It's often not the best choice, right? But sometimes when you're in a position, a coach is doing the best they can to show you exactly what they do. But I may leave out a detail. I say I push forward, but actually I push forward and slightly to the right. Or if he's in this body position, I do it a little bit different. And that's very hard to articulate in a single technique that you show. So sometimes when you're too rigidly trying to do the technique exactly like your coach showed you, you get stuck because the situation you're in is actually slightly different and he wasn't speaking about that exact scenario. So by taking what your coach says or what you learn says is like 70 to 80% true and also giving room for your intuition and instincts to work is the best synergy to put things together. There's an expression I like, it's the map is not the territory, right? And so the map in this sense is the technique that you were taught and the territory is the reality of the position. Most of the time when you're new in jiu-jitsu, you're learning from people who came before you and that's great. But even if no one had discovered those techniques before, or even if no one had ever discovered jujitsu before, these techniques exist. If you had an AI engine strong enough to calculate all the possibilities of what could happen with two human bodies fighting under the rule set of jujitsu, these positions like double sleeve, triangle choke, and omoplata, they exist whether they have been discovered or not. So if you spend a long enough time in a position, even without consuming content or learning from a coach, you'll eventually discover a lot of the same things that have already been discovered. And I think that's an important mindset to understand because it makes you realize that if you just spend enough time in the position and you follow kind of what feels natural and instincts and learn from different sources, you'll eventually find the answers. So the reason I mentioned this is, Again, don't be too rigid in what you've learned because often there's stuff missing in what you were taught and you're gonna lock yourself in and make it a lot harder for you to make innovative discoveries based off your intuition. And the last one is overthinking when sparring or going into analysis paralysis. A lot of people, when they're sparring, they're trying to remember the technique that they were taught. And this is really tricky because you're trying to be a good student, you're trying to do the technique, you're not just trying to use muscle, but the reality is these techniques only work when they're done at the exact right moment with full resistance. The analogy I always use, it's like trying to jump in slow motion. 
even if you do everything technique wise correct, you squat, you, you use your muscles to extend your legs, if you go too slow, you won't jump in the air. There's a certain force required to actually go in the air. And it's the same thing with the techniques. So if you're freezing when you're actually sparring, you're going, what was the technique? Where am I supposed to? It's already too late. You, in actual sparring, you have to just go with whatever your body tells you at that exact moment. And of course, a lot of times it's gonna be wrong, but then at least your body discovers what is the wrong choice, and eventually you'll start to find the better patterns. The purpose of drilling and specific sparring is to change your pattern recognition so that the likelihood during normal sparring that your body will give you useful answers is what you want. So if I'm rolling with someone or a brand new white belt is rolling with someone, actually the process is the exact same for me and him. I'm just present to the moment, not thinking at all, and I just take things as they come to me. But the reality is I have 20 years of experience giving me good options. So when I just sit there, my brain gives me good answers. If you're brand new, your brain doesn't give you that good of answers, right? So I have just studied, drilled, and specific spar for so long that I am able to be present to the moment and make good decisions. So what you wanna do is make a clear separation in your head of when I'm in normal rolling, I just stay present to the moment and trust what my body gives me even if it's a bad option at that time you can't control that and then after rolling when things don't go so well you reflect on what went wrong you analyze things you specific spar and you drill to try to make corrections to your muscle memory and your knowledge and then hopefully the next time you're in sparring your pattern recognition will do a better job giving you a good option all right guys, hope you like this style of video. I'm gonna be doing a lot more talking videos as well, and also a lot more narration videos. Please be sure to leave a comment and let me know if there's any conceptual questions or things you would like to see me talk about. These are really fun to make as well. And as always, if you guys like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.